I was doubly sad. I got leprosy and my family left me because I had leprosy. We need medical funds to get hospital treatment. We, the forgotten people, remain forgotten. Leprosy has been eradicated from most countries in the world, but it's still active in Myanmar, and many people who were cured still have to live with leprosy-related disabilities and social stigma, which makes it hard for them to survive, particularly in the current climate. Hello and welcome to Do Athan, a weekly podcast about human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Fondation Hirondelle. This episode is produced by a Do Athan journalist. Names and voices may have been changed to protect contributors. <laughs> I was diagnosed with leprosy when I was in the third grade. I get sad whenever I remember it. I wanted to become an educated person, a doctor. I was ridiculed for having leprosy each day. Fewer people interacted with me. They kind of avoided me. So I didn't go to school anymore. I abandoned my dream of becoming a doctor. Gomang Mao contracted leprosy over 30 years ago when he was just 13. He doesn't know how he got it. Soon after he dropped out of school, he cut his foot, but he didn't notice because the foot was numb. The wound became so infected that he had to have his leg amputated below the knee. His family didn't understand anything about the disease, but they were worried about it spreading to other family members. So they decided to send him to a leprosy care centre. I was doubly sad I got leprosy and my family left me because I had leprosy. They avoided me. I felt sad to think about even my parents didn't want to accept me. My parents at that time were not very knowledgeable about leprosy. They didn't know if it was communicable or not. That's why they did it. Well, I don't want to blame them. Let me be the only one who had leprosy. I didn't want it to spread to my siblings either. Leprosy is a bacterial infection, but it's not easily spread. And if it's diagnosed early, it can be cured with a course of multidrug therapy. Within weeks or even days, patients are no longer infectious, and they can be free of the disease in six months to one year. Gomangmang got treatment, so he hasn't had the disease for a long time, but he still has leprosy-related disability. He's currently living in Mayanchang village in Yangon Division, which was set up by the Meta Prahita shelter for people with leprosy. He met his wife when she visited there, and they now have five children. None of them have leprosy. His family relies on a daily government stipend of 500 Myanmar chat, which is about 20 US cents. And the shelter provides a meal for him and two meals for his older school-aged sons. The shelter was founded in 1995 for people disabled by leprosy whose families couldn't look after them. There are about 100 elderly people and 30 families living there. The shelter relies on donations from private individuals around the country. But since COVID-19 and the military coup and the economic collapse which followed, they've received only about half the donations they used to get. The chairperson of the shelter, Uhla Te, says it's increasingly hard to provide for everyone, particularly if anyone needs medical help for their disability or geriatric issues. We don't have enough funds to hire staff. We're operating with volunteers. There are many challenges. We have a hospital in the village, but there is no doctor in the hospital. It's difficult for us to get a car to send patients in emergencies to township hospitals. We need medical funds to get hospital treatment. We, the forgotten people, remain forgotten. And for these forgotten people, the problem is that it's very difficult for them to make a living. Some of them pick vegetables in the nearby forest to supplement their meals. Gomangmang also tries to earn an income by fixing electrical appliances. 
but very few people dare to come to the shelter for his services because they're afraid of the disease. And if he goes out to find work, he gets the same sort of reaction. Discrimination hasn't diminished. It just takes on new forms. In the past, they would utter discriminatory words to our faces like, don't bring those lepers out, keep them in the house. Now it's different. When I take the bus, I have to hide my hands and feet. If they're accidentally discovered, person sitting next to me will move to another seat. They don't say anything, but their actions speak volumes. Discrimination is preventing people like Go Mang Mang from earning an income, and it even affects the children who have never had leprosy. Mapupu is another resident of Mayanchang, another former leprosy sufferer. Her two older children have applied for many jobs in factories. They only succeeded when they hid their background. <laughs> If employers found they were from Mayanchong, they would reject the application. If they used a different village in the application, they would get the job. You won't get a job if you use Mayanchong. To get the job, applicants from Mayanchong use a different family registration list in the application. It's because of this kind of discrimination that Ma Yin Yin Hla sent two of her adult children to live in Mandalay to find work. She got leprosy when she was 12, which damaged her hand. She currently lives in Nantha Myang village, which is another leprosy centre like Mayanchang, but about 30 miles away from Mandalay. My son and daughter are working in beauty salons, restaurants or clothing shops in Mandalay. They don't dare let others know that they are from this village. They don't normally invite guests because there are so many people affected by leprosy here. My children don't feel good about this. Ma Yin Yin Hla says even people from neighboring villages rarely visit, for example, if they have wedding ceremonies at Nantha Myang. They don't normally come to our donation ceremonies. They give donation money. They don't come in person. They don't even come to eat our food. They don't care about looking bad. We don't even invite our own aunts. We are worried they would belittle or look down on the people with leprosy disabilities in our neighborhood. We daren't invite them. Uye is the spokesperson for Nanthamyang village. He said they've also seen a decrease in donations over the last four years. Few donors came during the COVID-19 pandemic. Then the political situation got worse. In 2021, there were only four or five donors. The number was very small. In Myanmar, we shouldn't neglect people affected by leprosy. We should provide them with health care. No government has looked after them. They say medical treatment is free of charge, but when you go to the hospital and there is no medicine, you have to buy it. Since the coup and the conflict and the restrictions and economic collapse which followed, many organizations which used to work on leprosy issues have stopped operating. International organizations are focusing on emergency and humanitarian work, and local groups are not getting enough donations to function. This affects the help available to people with leprosy and related disabilities. But it also means that leprosy is likely to be spreading faster than usual and going undetected. Myanmar is one of the few countries which still has a leprosy problem. But by 2020, the World Health Organization said the number of new cases in Myanmar was down to just over 1,800 a year. Although reported cases have been lower since then, Dr. Y from the leprosy control team under the National Unity Government believes that new cases must be increasing. Leprosy is systematically traced and tested in normal time when health care is provided. It's cured with a strategy of catch early, treat early. Now, during conflict and war, it's difficult to detect the disease easily. CDM health workers are providing health care under alarming conditions and they cannot provide treatment promptly. So I think the number of leprosy infections will be increasing. If people understood more about leprosy, it could help prevent both the spread of the disease and the discrimination which devastates the lives of those who had it.
For Gomaoma, all he can do is try and provide for his family now in these tough times and send his children away when they grow up so they can have normal lives. When they finish school, I won't keep my children with me. I will send them to their uncles or aunts. If they stay with me, they will face the same stigma as I do. When they become adults, I don't want them to live around the shelter. Everyone knows that Myung Chong is a leper shelter. I can't let this happen to my children. I've decided that I won't let them be stigmatised like me. This father won't let people say, these are the children of a leper from Myung Chong. This is my wish. Thanks for listening to this edition of Dota Fan. We'd welcome your feedback on social media. This project on human rights reporting is supported by Fondation Hirondelle with the help of our donors. You can listen to our podcast via the Dota Fan Facebook page. They can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes and Spotify. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. Please tune in again next week.